So let's imagine that somehow we managed to get things the size of moons or something. We got over the problems and formed moon-sized lumps orbiting around the Sun. Huge numbers of them in circular orbits. As time goes on, their gravity is going to warp them out of each other's orbit and start them colliding with each other. We can simulate this using a little computer program here. There's a copy of this made available to you so you can run it for yourself. Let's run it and see what happens. Now I put a bunch of small things in circular orbits around a star. Note that I made the planets much too big and much closer together than they really would be. Which means things happen faster. Same sort of pattern as you see in the real solar system but happening much faster so we can see what's going on. So what's happening here? You'll see lots of collisions. There was a collision just over there. We've got these two big red ones. Oh, they've just collided. So we've now got a very large planet very close in. And quite a large blue one out here. More ones over there in elliptical orbits. That one's going to... What's going on here? We have a collision. Yep. So now we've got a very big planet here. So it's quite different from our own solar system. A very big thing close in. Another big thing out here in elliptical orbit and a bunch of small stuff that probably isn't going to survive very long. If we zoom out, you can see we've lost things. Like over here, we've got what looks like a pair of planets, or even a triple group, orbiting around each other. What's happening in the middle? Looks like our two red things have collided. We've now got one big massive thing in an elliptical orbit. I think it's going to hit that green one. Yep. Maybe the purple one going to get sucked in. No, near miss. So here's our solar system here. We've got a red big thing in an elliptical orbit, a purple thing close in, and a bunch of planets that have gone way out. If you run the code again, we'll see something quite different. Let's try it again and see what we get. Every time I run it, it puts the things in different random starting positions. Okay, so what's happening here? So this blue one's getting big here. Oh, there's a red one out there. So a triple system here. What's happening to these two? They're orbiting each other. They're going to collide. Mm, haven't yet. So now we've got this big blue one closer in. This red double pair orbiting around each other. That little collision there. Still some being thrown out. Like this uh, light blue one's going out at a fair old speed. As there's a green one, light blue one over there. So the solar system looks a bit different. And if you run it again. We'll see what we get this time. Sometimes you get massive planets close in, in circular orbits. Sometimes you get small planets close in and big ones further out. Sometimes the orbits are circular, sometimes they're elliptical. You almost always get some things thrown out into interstellar space. This time it looks like it might be this one's going to form as the biggest. Oh, that one's pretty big. Anyway, play for yourself. It all looks like a somewhat random process. All right, Paul, so that was a pretty cool uh, simulation you showed there, but it seems all kind of random, like anything could happen. How on earth would we possibly end up with something like the solar system? And indeed, people do these simulations a lot, and sometimes you don't. In fact, usually you don't. Sometimes you get things like the solar system with your four equally spaced rocky planets in the inner solar system. Sometimes you get things quite different. There doesn't seem to be a lot of randomness in those last few big collisions. So... Okay, so that's going to obviously determine what the solar system really looks like. So I could imagine that Uranus is, for example, knocked over on its axis, and you're, you were thinking that would be something like one of those last collisions? Yes, so the last collision, the last big collision, turns out to be absolutely crucial. So it could well be the fact that Uranus is, is tipped over is because of that last big collision, the fact that Venus is spinning backwards, and in fact even for the Earth, the fact that the, we rotate not perfectly lined up with our orbit but tilted over by 23 and a half degrees is probably because of that last big collision. We think this last big collision was when something about the size of Mars came in and smashed into the Earth and had two effects. One that tipped things over 
and gave us our seasons. If it had hit just slightly further up or slightly further down, we might have not been tilted at all and have no seasons, or it could have been tipped over much more and have really dramatic seasons. So that last collision would have been pretty dramatic. Um, it seems like it would have... Uh pretty much damaged the earth and stripped part of it off, wouldn't it have? Indeed, the idea is this thing that crashed in, um, the central part of the collider sank to the middle of the earth, giving us an extra big iron core, but the outer parts was vaporized and came out and eventually solidified to form the moon. So this collision is also responsible for the moon and hence for our tides. All right, so I like the sound of it, but we're only one solar system, and yet we're thinking this applies to all solar systems. Yes, there's a lot of things, steps that we don't understand in this whole chain of reasoning. And to really get a grip of how common Earth-like solar systems are as opposed to other sorts, and maybe give us some clues as to how we get over these gaps in our understanding, you know, one solar system is not enough. We need to study some more. All right, so over the last 10 years, we have been going out and looking for the first time at solar systems beyond our own. So if we go out and we can do statistical studies, it sounds to me like we could maybe figure out whether or not this scenario is really correct. And the whole study of these exoplanets, planets on other stars, is a, one of the other parts of this whole course, a separate course within the sequence, which will be covered later.